Which technology is best for heating water? Solar thermal? Or solar electric? We're going to set up an experiment to find out. As you can see, the solar panels are mostly in shade. The sun is coming in through those trees. So every single panel has some shade on it, but the, it's still bright out. We're still getting over 600 watts coming into the batteries. Solar hot water system is completely off. There would be two LEDs if this was on, and this pump would be running. So that's off. It's not collecting any heat whatsoever. Right there are the solar panels. You can see solar panels on the wall and up on the roof. They look identical to the ones in the backyard in that it's still bright out. There is shade on each panel, but there's still sunlight. But these are doing nothing, zero. And the ones in the backyard are still doing 600. I've been observing this throughout the day. I keep coming into the garage and checking the solar thermal and at no point has the solar thermal been turned on because it's been cloudy and overcast. The sun actually only came out about an hour ago but it was already kind of behind the tree line so there were shadows. So all day long in cloudy weather producing zero from the solar thermal. The solar electric system on the other hand has produced 3.88 kilowatt hours. With 3.88 kilowatt hours being pumped into the batteries and zero BTUs being pumped into the heat for the garage. So even though solar thermal might be 70 or 80 percent efficient and the solar panels out in the backyard, solar electric, are only 18 percent efficient, but those things are still working on cloudy days and the solar thermal doesn't. So how does that even out? How does it work out in the long run? So we're going to set up two side-by-side -side experiments. I have some 55 gallon drums. Uh, Elena, why don't you show what we have for the solar electric side of things. It's a black iron coupler and this is so that we can thread it on to the water heating element. Now this water heating element is a 1500 watt 48 volt element. So we're going to drill a hole in the bottom of the 55 gallon drum. We're going to be able to pass the electric water heating element through that hole and we're going to be able to tighten the coupler up on the inside and that should make a watertight seal. On the solar thermal side of things, we picked up this little tiny 12 volt pump, which is just, when I took this out of the package, I was, I was like, oh, it's so cute. <laughs> is this one of Eleanor's toys? Right. Uh, but this is a 12 volt DC pump and uh, what does it say here? It says eight liters per minute, 2.1 gallons per minute. Uh, but this was one of the few pumps that I saw online that were, was both cheap and can be used with hot water and it's submersible. The last item I picked up was this. It's a duct wrap fiberglass insulation. So it has a, a foil face on one side. It's, uh, it's maybe an inch, inch and a half thick, something like that. This is what I'm going to use to wrap both of the 55 gallon drums. I'm also borrowing a data logger. It's a onset one. It has four inputs and I am borrowing four temperature sensors. So I'm going to put two sensors in each tank. I'm going to put one sensor up here towards the very top and another sensor down here towards the bottom. My idea with that is that I'll be able to average the two temperatures so that I get a more accurate uh, measurement of what the entire tank is doing uh, because I assume there's going to be some stratification uh, and I want to take that into account. I'm going to be mounting these out by the back array. We're really excited to get going on this experiment and this project so I'm probably going to be building this uh, in the next few days. Uh, so the first 24 hours we're open to suggestions. If I need to make an adjustment uh, I'm, I'm happy to hear you guys out and because uh, sometimes you guys have some really good ideas on how to make these projects better. Elena, which one do you think is going to win? Probably the electric. Why? Because we get a lot of cloudy days here in Massachusetts and if they're 
tend to work better at that time, I think that one might come out on top. I don't know if it's going to get it any hotter, but I feel like it's going to last longer. I have half a dozen of these collectors that I've been collecting <laughs> because I was planning on expanding the system on the house uh, so that it can handle some of the space heating. Uh, however, over the last few years that we've um, been doing all of these experiments, uh, I, I've just I've noticed solar electric, you know, like still putting out the kilowatt hours even on cloudy weather, and this thing being off. So that's why I'm so excited. You know, it's does the does the one sunny day a week where this thing is just cranking out the BTUs does that compensate, or does the tortoise? putting out a few kilowatt hours a day, uh, you know, is it going to outperform? We're going to find out. That's a good analogy. Yeah. <laughs> We've been reading a lot of kid books. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, please leave your comments below, any suggestions you might have. Thanks a lot for watching, uh, and please give the video a thumbs up. Bye.